some of them didn't soak up friend. Okay. Boop boop. Avicen, Archangel. And let me know if that's not large enough. It's, I think it's large enough. We can make it a bit bigger if we want. Go like that. All right. Avicen, Archangel. Not too much needs to be said about this one. Um, you know, two white, three colorless, four, four, flash, flying, vigilance. Those stats alone are going to warrant it quite a high rating uh, in any limited format. When it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain indestructible in tender turn. It's pretty damn good. When a non-angel creature you control dies, transform Avacyn at the beginning of the next end step. And what does Avacyn do when she flips? Boop, boop. Avacyn the Purifier. Flying 6-5, when this creature transforms Avacyn uh, when this creature transforms into Avacyn the Purifier, it deals 3 damage to each other creature and each opponent. So definitely um, a little bit of a downside for sure, but you can easily craft this into a position where it's just beneficial to you. I mean, you flash the, this in as a combat trick, you give all your creatures indestructible. Damn, that's great. Or, you know, it doesn't even need to be in combat. It just says when she enters the battlefield, she gives your creatures indestructible, right? So if your opponent's trying to use like a removal spell or something, good enough, you flashed in, you save your creature. You have a 4-4 four, four flyer. Should it flip, you have a huge flying beater. She's a lot more defensive on her um, non-transform side, right? Kind of a throwback to to the old Avacyn. That means, uh, you know, she has vigilance, so she can block. This one is just all aggro. All aggro. And remember, once she transforms into Avacyn the Purifier, she can't transform back. So, should something of yours die, and, you know, maybe that's that's something that your opponent can craft a play around. Uh, you flash it in, you, you two-for-one them, and then they craft a scenario where they're able to flip this um, and kind of get you. But overall, I think I'm going to give Avacyn pretty damn high rating. Uh, the double white makes it a little bit... Oh, maybe that's weird. That rating. Okay, let me fix that. Pretty dang good. I'm going to go with a 4.5 here. <coughs> a 4.5 and a cough. Back to white side. All right, well, there you go. There's the white side. All right. Next up, we have... Oh, I didn't change the size on that one. Pew. Next we have Abyssinian Missionaries. It's a little bit cut off, it's a little bit cut off. Alright, good enough. Alright. These are only limited rankings, correct? All right, next up we have Abyssinian Missionaries, one white, three colors for a 3-3 three, three human cleric. At the beginning of your end step, if Abyssinian Missionaries is equipped, transform it. So on its own, it's just a hill giant, a white hill giant. Flip it, it is Lunark Inquisitors, 4-4 four, four human cleric. When this creature transforms into Lunark Inquisitors, you may exile another target creature until Lunark Inquisitors leaves the battlefield. So obviously there are two things going on with this card, right? Um, on its front side, it does nothing. It's just vanilla, like many creatures are. And you are required to have an equipment to make this work. And should you equip this creature, um, it's going to turn into a 4-4 Fiend Hunter type effect. Or I guess Banisher Priest, they call it nowadays. Banisher Priest type effect. So, there are two questions. Are there any good equipment in this format? And if so, how frequently are you going to be able to get those good equipment to uh, to be able to equip to these these Abyssinian missionaries? I guess in a third question is um, how highly do you take equipment after you take these cards, right? So, spoiler alert, <clears throat> I drafted two of these uh, and it was great. I was playing two of the the daggers, the uh, the shard of glass, and I was also playing. I don't remember the other name of the other one. The uh, 
They give a creature plus one plus one vigilance, and if it's a human, give it plus one plus zero. Now the shards of glass, there were two things going for it. Uh, shards of glass by itself is a one mana equipment. Equip creature gets plus one plus zero. Equip is one. Whenever you equip creature attacks, you may put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. So it worked really well with delirium creatures, which I had a few of, um, like the the one one guy topplegeist, I think it's called. We'll get to that later and some other Delirium cards. So there, there was more synergy than just running a, a kind of a bad equipment spell uh, in my deck. Um, I think this card is actually pretty good. Um, from what I've seen, removal is a little bit lackluster in this format, and uh, one, at one attached to a 4-4 body is pretty nice. It's not it's not the greatest creature around. You do have to sort of build around it. Uh, if you only have one equipment, more often than not, it's just going to be a hill giant. But um, I think this card is is decent. I think I'm going to go with a 2.5 though. A three feels a little bit weird. Um, 2.5 out of five seems about right. Again, it's a card that by itself is is fine. Our fine stats. You know, you'll you'll run a hill giant. If you ever flip it, it just becomes insane. <clears throat> I guess I should give you guys a better a better s s uh, sense of what the scale means, but that's fine. Whatever. Anyways. I like that. Yeah, 2.5 and goes up by 0.5 every two equipments you have. That sounds about right. Alright, let's move on to the next one now. I'm using monitor capture here, so you're going to have to bear with me as we go. Boop, 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 boop. Doink. All right, close enough. <laughs> Handware Militia Captain. One white, one colorless for a 2-2 human soldier. So it's a bear. At the very worst, it's a bear. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control four or more creatures, transform Handware Militia Captain. So already bear, already a passable filler card in need. Might make more sense to put your number up at the beginning. No, I mean, if, if I have, like, five equipment, I think the Abyssinian Missionaries is, is like, a four plus, you know? Anyway, so if you have four more creatures, the beginning, or if you have four more creatures, at the beginning of your upkeep, yeah. Turns into Westvale Cult Leader, Star Star, Human Cleric. Westvale Cult Leader's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. At the beginning of your end step, put a 1-1 one, one white and black Human Cleric creature onto the battlefield. Uh, I think this card is pretty nice. I, I'll, I will start giving the rating after uh, I read the card, so it'll make it a little bit easier. I think this def card is definitely definitely pretty solid. I'm going to give it a 3.5 here out of 5. Um, it does take a lot of, well, maybe not too much work, just a bit of work to, to, um, to get this to transform, but it's not conditional in the sense that Missionaries is, where you have to have an equipment, right? You just have to play out other creatures, which your deck is, I assume, going to have a few more creatures to play. And there are a few token producers in white. Uh, we'll get to them later. There there are um, a bunch of, let's see, a bunch of uh, spirit makers, like the enchantment uh, that you can pl pay for two and then three mana to sacrifice it. There are just other spirits that produce other spirits. There's that one quote unquote morbid card. Um, again, it's a bear with upside and its upside's very large. As soon as you flip it, so, uh, assuming it survives your turn, you're gonna get another token, so it's gonna be a minimum of 2-2, uh, even if your opponent somehow wiped your four other creatures. <clears throat> uh, I'm not gonna compare this to Geist on Art Monk, but it definitely has the capabilities of, of getting close. Oh crap, did I do this by I did this by name, didn't I? What the? Oh god, ruined, ruined. I select. I started the wrong way. Anyways, all right. Uh, yeah. So three point five for that last card. I didn't sort this by color originally. It was by alphabetical, or it was alphabetical. Whoopsies. All right. So let's go a little bit back in time. Um, and uh, 
Let's go with Always Watching. This is a two white, one colorless enchantment. Non-token creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have vigilance. I think this card is great. I'm going to give it a pretty high rating here of four. Um, I guess I might as well do 4.0. I had a chance to play with this card and against this card, and it always impressed me. Um, if you guys know like Glorious Anthem type effects in Limited, they're generally pretty strong. Um, this one gives your creatures vigilance in addition. So not only is it very, very offensive, it is very defensive. You're just mass pumping your team, and uh, it's allowing your creatures to attack and block. Uh, the only downside, of course, is that it's not very splashable. Two white is going to mean that you're going to have to be white as one of your base colors. But uh, if this is a rare I open, I'm going to look to see what other white cards are in my pool for sure. Um, a little downside, yes, non-token creatures don't get the boost, but uh, there are plenty of um, <coughs> regular, regular creatures uh, for this to pump. I think this card is very good. Uh, I'm always going to take it highly in draft, and I'm always going to look to play it in sealed if I can. Alright, next up, boop, 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 boop. we're going to have Angel of Deliverance. Two white, six colorless, six six flyer. Damn, that's expensive for limited. Delirium. Whenever Angel of Deliverance deals damage, just damage, doesn't have to be the player, if there are four or more card types and one card in your graveyard, exile target creature and opponent controls. So this is kind of like the... Um, I think it's called Admonition Angel from that old set. Um, similar stats, similar ability. I think this one is definitely a bomb, but it's um, it's just very, very expensive. I think, I think I'm still going to give it a 4. This one is actually so, sort of splashable, even though it's double white, just because it's it comes down so late. Uh, from my experience, this format has been a little bit faster though, um, which means it might be hard to get this online. The Delirium uh, is surprisingly easy to get if you're trying trying to build around it. Um, and even if you're not trying to build around it, you're obviously just going to get random creatures in the graveyard and generally sorceries and instants. Uh, very, very high power level, 6-6 six, six flyer, exiles creatures. Um, notice that it says just exile target creature and opponent controls. If they kill the Angel of Deliverance, they do not get the um, the uh, creatures back. Now I'm looking at this on power level alone. I think after have playing with this set, I would probably rate this closer to a 3 or 3.5. But power level alone is going to dictate me giving it a 4 for now. Um, another problem with this card is that it doesn't do anything immediately when it enters the battlefield. Right? It's Sure, it's a 6-6 six, six flyer, but you have to deal damage with it. That being said, if they attack into you, it, you can also do it on blocks. So, something to note. Oh, that's a good call. I should be hiding the number between cards. All right, that's fair. I'll start doing that. Good call. I'll start doing that. Okay. So, in the end, I think I'll give this a a 3.5, maybe like a 3.25. Um, card is... What the heck happened to my number scale? Card is obviously great, but it's so, it's so expensive. It's a little bit slow and dirtly. Yada yada. I don't think I'm going to be giving out many uh, 0.25s, but here's one. All right, let's go <clears throat> continue down the line here. I will stop with the, uh, <coughs> the on screen rating until I, I bring the card up. All right, next card. Boop, 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 boop. We have one of the cards I spoiled, Angelic uh, Angelic Purge. <clears throat> one white, two colorless sorcery is an additional cost to, sac to cast Angelic Purge. Sacrifice a permanent. Exile target artifact, creature, or enchantment. Uh, it's very solid. You know, it's common white removal. That's hard to come by. This is just going to deal with 
most of the pesky um, permanents that, that you want it to deal with. It doesn't deal with, notably, uh, lands, and there's sort of some lands in this format that you do want to kill. Um, I forget the name of the Westvale Abbey. I think that's that's the one that poops out one ones and then eventually turns into Olven, blah, 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 that big, big ass demon. Um, but Angelic Purge, I would I would take this quite highly in draft. Uh, I think it's a pretty a pretty decent white signal. And in sealed, you're always just looking to play these type of cards. They're just very very solid. Um, what was I going to say about this card? Oh, it's kind of like Nahiri's ability, uh, minus two, exile target artifact creature enchantment, except Nahiri is uh, just tapped permits. I think this card is quite nice as a common. It's, um, you know, you're not going to get much better than this. It's actually pretty splashable too. I think it's honestly better than the, uh, than the, uh, the stupid angel that I, uh, angel of deliverance. I'm going to give this a 3.5. Again, it's splashable, it's great, it's cheap. You can sacrifice clue tokens, you can sacrifice unnecessary lands in the late game. Uh, white has spirits, which we'll get to later. This card, just very decent, very decent. 3.5. All right. Next up, we have Apothecary Geist. One white, three colors for a 2 3 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another spirit, you gain three life. Uh, I mean, we've seen a ton of these type of creatures before. In fact, in Battle for Zendikar, we saw a creature that was almost exactly this card, uh, Courier Griffin. Same stats, almost exactly the same. Enters the battlefield effect. 2-3 uh, Flyers for 4 and Limiter are, are perfectly acceptable. They're not exciting, but you, you will happily run them um, if your curve uh, is looking for you know, a 4-drop or just some evasive creature. <clears throat> Obviously, there's some slight upside if you have a Spirit. Uh, you gain through life, which is not insignificant. It's just more of a bonus than anything else. Um, I think overall this card is just fine. It's filler. It's probably like a two point. What am I going to give this? A two? Two point five? Two point five seems too high. Well, we'll just give it a two point zero. I think I think that's probably fine. My numbers keep resetting for some reason, so. Apologize, apolog or apologies for that. It's not amazing. You're gonna you're gonna run this in your white decks for sure, but you're not uh, really super happy about it. All right, let's keep moving down the list. Now this card, my friends, is a nice one. This one's bound by Moon Silver. One white, two colorless. Enchantment aura, enchant creature. Enchanted creature can't attack or. Boop. Can't attack or block or transform. Sacrifice another permanent. permanent. Attach bound by moon silver to target creature. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery and only once each turn. So, base, base, base level. It is pacifism for three mana. There is this extra ability though. Sacrifice another permanent. Attach bound by moon silver to target creature. Now you can only do it on your turn and as a sorcery. But I think this card is very, very good removal. Um, I probably see myself splashing for this, just like the Angelic Purge, um, should it warrant. I take this. This is an easy first pick in draft uh, and highly, highly playable in sealed. In fact, one of the cards that will push me into a color for sure or a color I will be looking to splash. Um, <clears throat> the nice thing is, generally, you'll be able to play this early and then later on if the opponent plays something, scarier, you, you can move it over. There are um, many sacrifice effects in this format though, so you have to be a little bit wary of what colors your opponents uh, are playing, and there's also a lot of bounce, so you might not always get full value out of this, or at least the value that you, you think you get, but again, this card is going to do a lot. Um, it's no arrest. The, the creatures can still use their activated abilities, but uh, overall I think this card is, is very, very good. Um, I think we're going to go with a 3.5, maybe even a 4. I don't remember what I rated as a 4, so I don't want to get too uh, too crazy. But uh, this is this is a removal spell that I will I will happily take and play and splash. Maybe this is too low. 
I don't I don't remember what I ra rated as a four. In fact, this is better than the angel, and I rated the angel as a three point five, right? All right, so let's just go. Let's let's give this a four. <laughs> Can you add rating of better than sanitarium skeleton? Uh, that doesn't exist though. If angelic purge was a three point five, then this is then this is probably a four. I think this is definitely a little bit better than uh, angelic purge. Uh, these are out of five. Does transforming no transforming does not cause auras to rem to be removed. Also, this specifically says that enchanted creature cannot transform. All right, let's go on to the next one. <clears throat> Bygone Bishop, one white, two colorless for a 2 3 flyer. Whenever you cast a creature spell with converted mana cost three or less, investigate. Wow, that's pretty dang strong. A 2 3 flyer for three uh, is already above the curve in uh, limited as far as power and toughness um, on an evasive creature goes. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell with converted mana cost three or less, investigate. So for those who may be not familiar with Investigate. That's put a colorless clue artifact token on the battlefield with uh, pay two colorless, sacrifice this artifact, draw a card. I think this card is great. Um, I'm not sure if I would ever splash for it necessarily, but if I'm playing white, I will, you know, it's, it's obviously 100% slam jam. Um, in fact, this is one of the cards that would probably draw me to white. Um, it's just so much value. It's like, oh gosh. Granted, it's only for creatures with converted mana cost three or less, but just pooping out a clue token every time you play one for basically free is such high value. Like late game, it just turns all of your all of the creatures that you cast into effective cycles or cantrips in addition to their creature. Um, man, I think this card is real nice. Boy, I'm tempted to give this a super high rating. From what I've seen in uh, in limited, from what from the, the games that I've played. Clues are a little bit slow and dirtly, but should games stall out, and they sometimes do, it's it's limited. Um, this this is just gonna pull you way ahead. Not to mention you can just you can just jam this on turn three, right? You don't have to sandbag this. You can just jam this on turn three and start beating in the air and then just get some random value with a clue token or two. Um, that's a good question. If Bound by Moon Silver and Bygone Bishop were in the same pack, what would I take? I think I would take the bygone bishop, right? It's just card advantage. Not immediately, but anytime you cast a creature three or less after it, it's, it's just going to be card advantage. I think I'm going to rate it similarly. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I think I'm going to rate similarly to Bound by Moon Silver. I'm going to give it a 4.0. It's just, it's so cheap and it does so much. I don't know if I could give it anything less and feel comfortable. I'm going to get a 4.0. All right, let's move on to the next one now. Yeah, some more filler cards. We've seen a lot of great cards so far, so it's about time we uh <clears throat> we find some filler. Cathar's Companion, one white, two colorless, 3-1 creature hound. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Cathar's Companion gains indestructible until end of turn. Ugh. I'm dying here. Um, this is pretty filler. There aren't too many great combat tricks in this format. There are a few, definitely. So what it turns out being is that you generally play this card, and then maybe the, on the next turn you like play a sorcery on your first main phase. Um, This is obviously fine in white decks. It gets a lot better the more the more um, the more tricks you have. But eh, it's yeah. There's not much to say about this card. It's three mana for a three one. You it has some blowout potential, but generally it's not going to be too impressive. Oh god damn it! I forgot to remove the rate re the rating from last time. I'm going to give this a one point five. It's playable. It does things. Um, I'm not super happy about it. The end. <laughs> Next up we have Chaplain's Blessing, one white, sorcery, you gain five life.
Please don't play this card. Maybe there is some fringe scenario where your opponent is playing mono 1 and 2 drops and uncaged furies, and you're like, I just want to gain 5 life for 1 mana. Even still, don't play this card. You have better things you can sideboard into. I'm not going to say anything else about it. That's all. That's all there is to say about that card. All right. Moving down the list. Dauntless Cathar. We have ourselves a 1 white, 2 colorless, 3 2. Not bad base stats. Human, human soldier. And uh, you can play a white and a colorless. Exile Dauntless Cathar from your graveyard. Put a 1 1 white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Activates it this, activate this ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery. I think these cards are great, and especially at common. Uh, you can assume to pick up quite a few if you would like in draft <coughs> uh, in sealed perfectly fine three mana for a three power creature is is generally where you're looking to be and the fact that you can gain a one one you know evasive spirit um, after this creature dies is, is just value you you think about the cards from original Innistrad some of the things like um, doomless traveler mausoleum guard uh, there's probably a few I'm forgetting right now, but those creatures were always decent, uh, even though Do like Doom Traveler was just a 1-1 one, one and Mausoleum Guard was a 4-mana 2-2. Two, two. Um, you know, they, they were just so much value, and I think this card is, is right up there on the value scale as far as commons go. Um, I mean, it's not a card you're looking to splash, it's not something that's super exciting, but it, it's perfectly passable, right? You're always going to play this card in white. Uh, it's always going to do some work for you. Uh, I'm going to give this I'm gonna give this a little 2.5 rating ball here. I can't really read chat either, so sorry if I've miss been missing resubs. I'm looking at my Twitch alerts now and it says I've been missing some resubs. Uh, so yeah, Dauntless Cathar, gonna give it a 2.5 out of 5. It's almost a 5 out of 7, but a 2.5 out of 5 I think is, is perfectly solid. You know, it's that's all it is. It's just perfectly solid. Next up, we have Declaration in Stone. This was one of the uh, cards I think they previewed a, a little while ago. Uh, one white, one colorless for a sorcery, exile target creature, and all other creatures its controller controls with the same name as that creature that player investigates for each non-token creature exiled this way. I think three is too high for a Dauntless Cathar. Uh, as far as Declaration in Stone is concerned, Exile target creature and all other creatures its controller controls with the same name as that creature. That player investigates for each non-token creature exiled this way. So yes, generally you're going to be giving your opponent a clue token. Um, or rather, you're going to let your opponent investigate uh, after resolving this card, but it is such efficient, versatile, white removal. One white, one colorless, like ugh. Uh, these this is approaching levels of like path and swords. Uh, obviously, it's not anywhere as good as those, considering it's twice as much mana and a sorcery. But this, you're always going to play this card. You might even splash for this card because of its versatility. Um, yeah, and generally, generally, giving that player a a clue is not that. Um, not that much of a downgrade. Plus, you know, there are going to be instances where your opponent has multiple of the same token, and being able to wipe all of those and not give them any uh, clues is quite nice. Uh, wow. I... Splashable, great, cheap. This one I'm going to give a pretty high high rating as far as removal concerned. White's already had three removal, and I think I've rated them 3.5, 4, and 4. I think this is probably on par with the Bound by Moonsilver. Uh, I'm going to give this a 4.0. I'm going to give this a 4.0. I think this card is, is very good. I will splash for this card. Um, yeah, just does it all. <coughs> Alright. I'm dying. Let's move down the line. Descend upon the Sinful. Uh, I actually opened this card during the uh, pre pre release. But uh, my white was just awful, so 
didn't have a chance to play it. This is Two White Four Colorless Sorcery. Let's read the first. Exile all creatures. What? Exile all creatures. Yeah, that's pretty dang good. Wrath effects are generally um, pretty nice and limited, and this exiles all the creatures, so pesky things like Dauntless Cathar can't use their ability. It also, you know, if your opponent doesn't already have a creature in their graveyard, this is not going to let them get closer to Delirium. Speaking of, this card has Delirium itself. Put a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying onto the battlefield if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. So, and actually I didn't make this conne connection until now. If you have Delirium, this is just Magister of Worth. If you have Delirium, this is Magister of Worth. And we all know how good Worth is. Uh, this card is very powerful. It, you know, it. if you have Delirium, this card is actually a bomb. Wrath Effects I don't call bombs, but if you have Delirium, if you're putting in that 4-4 White Angel token, this is kind of like... Yowza. And again, uh, being 6 mana, you're not going to cast this card until later in the game anyways. God damn it, I forgot to remove the last writing. Uh, being... <clears throat> Being 6 mana, you're not going to play this until the later game anyways. I mean, sometimes you just jam this on 6 because you're behind, but this card has basically all upside. I mean, if you're not casting it, that means you're in an okay position. Uh, if you are casting it, well, then your opponent's going to cry. Uh, I think this card is is very, very good. It's not really splashable. I guess the angel that that was 8 mana earlier is not really special either. Anyway, um, but this is one of the cards that will pull me to white, for sure. Uh, I think in sealed, you're always looking to play this. In draft, you're always going to take this very highly. Not a 4. Uh, this is going to be my first 4.5. <coughs> oh, I guess Avison was a 4.5. Okay, this is on par with Avison then. This card is great. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Devil Thorn Fox. One white, one colorless creature fox. This is a 3 1. That's all it is. It is. There have been plenty of 2 mana 3 1s in White's history. This is just a more flavorful with Innistrad 3 1. It's fine. It's filler. If you're aggressive, sure. Um, a lot of tr the time, this is going to trade down. A lot of the time, this is still going to trade up. Not very impressive. Not a 4.5. God damn it, I forgot to remove the frickin' rating again. I'm gonna give this a 1.5. Again, you, you can play this card, you're not happy with it. It's it's definitely a bit of a fillerish card, but um, it definitely packs a punch. If you can just back it up with some removal or combat tricks, sure. Uh, and late game, again, it can generally trade up, but uh, not too impressed with this card. Sure, if it was if it was a wolf and had some synergy, maybe, maybe a 2. But uh, as it stands, we're going to give that a nice little 1.5. All right, next on our list, we have, ooh, not you, ooh, ooh. Drog Skull Cavalry, two white, five colors for a 4-4 four, four flyer, ooh, a little bit small for seven mana. Uh, whenever another spirit enters the battlefield under your control, you gain two life, so it doesn't count itself. But for one white, three colorless, that's it. You don't have to tap it. You don't have to do some extra cost. Put a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. This card is nice. Uh, I do consider this card a bomb in any limited format. It is expensive for the, the stats, but the ability just puts it way over the top. If you untap with this card, you are probably going to win the game. Not only does it give you multiple creatures, um, effectively every turn, because if you just play one more land after playing the cap cavalry itself, you're going to be able to put two creatures on the battlefield immediately. You're also gaining two life for each of those spirits. So, say, say you play this, you know, you're trying to stabilize, you play this out. It's a 4-4 four, four flyer, it's generally going to block most creatures as it is. If they don't have a removal spell, you untap, you play a land, you poop out two 1-1s, one -ones, you gain four life, and then you just laugh at your opponent. Um, yeah, this card's real good. Ah... Uh, I think draft is is going to be fast in this format, which is why I might rate it a little bit lower uh, in limited than I normally would for a card on this power level. But in sealed, yeah, wham, jam, slam. Uh, if you open this, 
look at your other white cards because this is definitely a card you want to be playing. Uh, I'm going to give this card <clears throat> a nice... Uh, man, I want to give it a 4.0, but I think that might be a little bit too high. Like I said, I think in draft it's going to not be as impressive uh, because it's a little bit slow. This is like a, this is like a 3.5 or a 4. This is... Maybe I should give it a 3.75, yeah. Let's go with that. Let's give it a 3.75. <coughs> this card is, is right up there. It's definitely a bomb. Um, I don't think that I can say too much more about this card. Yeah. It's just great. Plus, there are other spirits in, in, in white anyways. It's not like this is the only spirit producer. So, we'll give that a nice... 3.75 rating. All right, next card. Eerie Interlude. One white, two colors. Instant. Exile any number of target creatures you control. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Exile any number of target creatures you control. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So this is a card in white that I will always play. Uh, if nothing else, as like a combat trick or a... Um, way to protect my creatures. Uh, and this just gets better and better for any creatures that you control that have um, uh, enter the battlefield's abilities. Uh, it's, it's not a high pick in draft. It's, it's not something that's going to pull you into white and sealed. But it definitely has some nice interactions. Um, you know, it's, it's fine, it's cute. We don't see too many of these effects anymore these days. I think this is probably higher than you think it is, but still not great. Uh, I'm going to give it a 2.5 here. Just just the, the unique uniqueness of the ability itself. <clears throat> not necessarily uh, anything else. It definitely has high upside, and Yes, the downside is that you need creatures, and sometimes it doesn't really do much. But at the very worst case, you know, you can block something and flicker. <clears throat> All right. I'm still dying over here. I apologize. Let's go to the next card now. Emissary of the Sleepless. Emissary of the Sleepless has been uh, joining me for the last few days as I get over this get over this uh, sickness. Uh, this is a 1 white 4 colors for a 2 4 flyer. Eh, fine stats, not amazing. When Emissary of the Sleepless enters the battlefield, if a creature died this turn, put a 1 1 white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. So, morbid basically. Uh, if a creature died, you get a 1 1 white spirit token in addition to the 2 4. <clears throat> um, it's okay. Uh, base stats alone, it's not thrilling, but it's fine. Generally, in limited, like five mana for a three-three flyer is is the is the bar. So a two-four flyer for five is is a little bit expensive for what you're used to, but uh, still not unplayable. Uh, if a creature died, yeah, so if Morbid's turned on, this this definitely goes up a teeny bit. The problem being, right, you have to cast this on your turn to get the to get the uh, the token. Sure, it does work with our previous rare Eerie Interlude. Like if you flicker this and a creature died, you are going to get the uh, the enters the battlefield ability, but um, the flicker f effects are not common. Uh, in fact, that Eerie Interlude was rare, so I don't think uh, that's going to happen as frequently as you might think. Now there are some other spirits in, in the format. There's one that you can bounce a spirit to your hand. Um, so maybe this gets better with that, but I still don't think that this is very impressive. Uh, it's kind of a low rating, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to give this a 2.0. This is the only card with quote-unquote morbid in the format, um, and I don't think they wanted to add too many new, well, too many keywords. This is effectively morbid. It is actually morbid. They just opted not to use it. All right. 2.0, Emissary of the Sleepless. Next card, Ethereal Guidance. 
Uh, one white, two colorless sorcery creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. So we always see these effects in some capacity in limited formats. Uh, a lot of the time they are instants, like Inspired Charge from BFZ. This one is a sorcery, it does cost one less. It's not amazing, you know, sure if you have a swarm of creatures, if you're super aggressive, you might want one of these cards. Or if you have a lot of token producers, you might want a lot of these cards. Uh, generally, this is not the type of card you're looking to play, but sure, in some decks it does get uh, warranted. I'm going to give this a 1.5 and not feel too bad about it. Man, there has to be a way that it doesn't keep resetting this freaking size. Anyways, Ethereal Guidance 1.5, probably close to 1, honestly. Um, yeah, not, not super happy about that card. All right. Continuing down the list, we have Expose Evil. One white, one colorless, instant. Tap up to two creatures, investigate. And again, investigate, you put a colorless clue artifact token on the battlefield with um, pay two, sacrifice this artifact, draw a card. <clears throat> um, I mean... It is what it is. It's it's written exactly on the card. It's not impressive. It's fine if you are on the investigate plan. Uh, there are some synergies with it with clue tokens, and this is not a bad way to to buy you some time and and produce a clue. But overall, I don't think this card's very good. Um, this is probably like a 1.0. If anything, I definitely think it's worse than than the plus two plus one. Um, but hey, you know what, I will probably end up playing this, because if you need a filler card, this is perfectly fine, right? It buys you life, and it effectively cycles, right? So, it, it, it could be worse, for sure. In fact, it's, it's probably closer to a 1.5 than a 1, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not looking to play this card. I'm not super happy about it. All right. Next up, we have Griff's Boon. So I had this card during the pre-pre-release. I never played it though, and I never played against it. This is a one white enchantment aura, enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus so and has flying. That by itself is not very impressive, but one white, three colorless, return Griff's boon from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to target creature. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. So this just has value written all over it, and you get to make a creature evasive plus boost its power a little bit. Oh, man. I'm not sure what to make of this card. You have to also remember that this is a very easy way for you to get Delirium, or get closer to Delirium, right? Because uh, it's, it's a very cheap enchantment, and it's a, a creature enchantment, so it's the, those are more likely to fall off and be put into the graveyard than, you know, just regular uh, enchantments. I want to give this card a little bit higher of a rating than I think... Hmm. Um, I think this card has some decent potential. It's, again, it's just kind of value. Uh, I'm not going to give it a 1. I think I'm going to go with like a 2.25. I don't know how to, I don't know how to rate this as of yet. It definitely could be some sort of sleeper. Um, it also could just be complete and under jank, but we'll see how the format plays out, um, and we'll see if this card is is any good in limited formats. I'm gonna I'm gonna tentatively give it a 2.25, and uh, we'll see we'll see where this goes after after we've had a chance to play with the format a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, and next up we have hope against hope. One white. Two colorless enchantment aura, enchant creature. So another, another enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus one plus one for each creature you control. As long as enchanted creature is a human, it has first strike. These effects are so swingy. There are times where this will just win you the game. Like you go uh, one drop, two drop, three drop, or something like one drop, two drop. Equip this, GG. Or you know, you cast this late in the game when the board is gummed up. Each player has five creatures, and you're like, hope against hope on my flyer? And they're like, yeah, you got me. <coughs> um, 
Um, I'm generally not a fan of these type of cards, but that's only because this one, you re it requires other creatures, right? Um, now base alone, you put it on a creature and it gets plus one plus one, and if it's a human, it gets first strike, and it gets bigger for each other creature you cast afterwards. So you don't need other creatures uh, beyond the one that you're enchanting, but it still, it still seems very, very high risk, high reward to me. <clears throat> Um, I think I think about cards like, let's see, uh, like, well, maybe not Blanchwood Armor. I, I think there are other effects like this where it's for each other creature you control. But I think again, this card has high potential, not great. Uh, I think it's I'm gonna rate it similarly to the Griff's Boon. I'm gonna give it a two point two five. I think I think this is probably better than bad. But it's not a card that I'm leaping for joy to play. Um, yeah. All right. Next up, boop, 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 boop. humble the brute. One white four colorless instant. Destroy target creature with power four or greater. Investigate. You know, you you recall smite the monstrous from BFZ. Um, Humble the Brute, not very impressive. I think this is a card that you'll almost always play in sealed. In draft, I'm not going to take this very highly. I think draft is more about the uh, the smaller creatures, but there are creatures that, well, obviously you want to kill. There there are going to be big creatures in limited, and Humble the Brute does deal with them. Um, it kind of cycles. It's seven mana before you actually kill the creature and uh, replace itself with a draw card, but um, this card's perfectly fine. Uh, that's ba that's basically all all there is to it. You're not you're not extremely happy about this removal spell because it's a little bit conditional, but it replaces itself. It's instant. It does it does some things that you, that you're happy with. I'm gonna give it a two point five. <clears throat> so far, white has quite a bit of removal, and all of them I've given I think decent ratings so far. <clears throat> um, obviously, I think humble the brutes the worst of them, but. Uh, you know, we'll keep our, keep our eyes out for, for any others that come up. All right. Well, at least I muted halfway through it, so it wasn't that bad. Uh, <clears throat> Inquisitor's Ox. Sorry, I still very, very phlegmy. Very, very... Somebody called it Lung Butter. Yeah, it's pretty much Lung Butter, except it's more green than yellow. As is my... Yeah, anyways, TMI, TMI. Alright, Inquisitor's Ox. One white, three colors, two five. 2-5. Now, generally for 4 mana you see 2 fours, but this is a 2-5. Uh, Delirium Inquisitor's Ox gets plus 1 plus 0 and has Vigilance as long as there are 4 or more card types among cards in your graveyard. I think this card is actually fine. Um, it's not amazing. Like, you're not... You're not excited about this card and you're not picking it highly, but <clears throat> in Sealed it's just a brick wall uh, that has attacking potential should you have delirium in draft it's probably a fine four drop filler card <clears throat> um, I'm gonna give this a 2 a 2.5 like I think this is actually decent again seven seven combined um, power and toughness for four mana is is not bad and this this has upside so it's a dirtle for sure but it's a big dirtle and I like big dirtles. Alright. Next up we have the Inspiring Captain. One white, three colorless, three three, human knight. When Inspiring Captain enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Um, this is a basically a functional reprint of a bunch of cards that we've seen. 
Uh, yeah, it's it's okay. It's not great. Sure, if you're aggressive, this can. If you're aggressive and you just curve into this, yeah, uh, you're gonna bash your opponent for a lot. In late game, maybe, as the board comes up, this this can help push through some creatures. But it's not a card you're taking high or anything like that. I think the Ox is is better than the Inspiring Captain. Um, I think the Captain is kind of just one of those filler cards, better than the aggressive strategies. Uh, it's not a 2.5. I'm just going to give this a, a 2.0. Inspiring Captain 2.0. Yada yada. On to the next one. Okay, Militant Inquisitor. One white, two colors, two three. Militant Inquisitor gets plus one plus oh for each equipment you control. So base standalone stats. Two three for two uh, three mana. That's that's the the average filler. Uh, power and toughness for a creature. Three mana for two three. It's you know you'll play it in a pinch, but it doesn't do much, right? Um, so I was talking earlier about the Abyssinian missionaries. The, the one that flips into a 4-4 four, four that exiles a creature uh, if it's equipped. This was in that deck, and if you have any number of equipments, this is actually a pretty decent card. Uh, you know, the more equipment you get, the stronger that this gets, obviously, but uh, even just equipping one, uh, one equipment onto this card is going to make it a pretty lethal 3-mana creature, right? Even if you just equip it with the, I don't remember what it's called, the plus one plus one and vigilance uh, card, it's already a four four. So I think this is this is not as bad as a common as you think it is, or r rather, it's not as fillerish as you think it is. Granted, if you have equipment, uh, overall, it's still just a, a random dirtle. It's not very amazing. I'm gonna leave it at 2.0, just like the inspiring captain. <clears throat> And on to the next, Deuterino. Moorland Drifter. One white, one colors for a 2-2 spirit. Delirium. It has flying as long as there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. So it's a bear. Standalone, it's a bear. Uh, late game, it's going to be a 2-2 flyer for two. This card is actually just very, very decent filler for white. Um, I think I'm always going to be happy to play these just because it's, it's normal uh, on curve early game. And then late game, it, it's an ev evasive beater. Uh, I think I'm going to give this like a 2.5, 2.75, 2 2.5. Again, you'll, you'll play this in any and all of your white decks, but it's not going to pull you into it or anything. Um, and again, late game, it, it, it can do some decent work. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to start moving a little bit quicker here. I am not very far into white, and yeah. <laughs> did, not, did not realize how, how long this was going to take. Nahiri's machina Machinations. I think it's Machinations, right? Machin machinations. Anyways, one white, one colorless enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gains indestructible intent a turn. Nahiri's mach Machinations deals one damage to target blocking creature. So, by itself without the ability, is it good enough in just white? At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gains indestructible intent a turn. I think not. What if you're red white? Nahiri's Machinations deals one damage to target blocking creek. No, it's Mac. <laughs> uh, if you're red white, one white, sorry, one red, one color. So Nahiri's Machinations deals one damage to target blocking creature. If you are red white, this card is great. Okay, if you are red white, this card is great. It, it's going to make combat hell for your opponent because not only can sh can you shoot down creatures um, before they deal damage if they're small enough. But you can also trade up a lot of the time. Uh, I think. I think that this is going to be a sleeper in those aggressive red-white decks. Uh, I think this card can do some serious work. Again, you have to be aggressive though, because if you're on the back foot, this card does actual nothing. Um, so it <laughs> it has a wide range of of how good it is. It's it, it's dead or it's insane. It's dead or it's insane, and because because of that, I don't like cards like these generally. You know, where high risk, high reward, or does nothing, does a lot. Um, I'm gonna give it a 2.0, but I think in the correct deck, this can this can do some major major work. Remember, these are just basic guidelines. Doesn't mean doesn't mean 2.0 is a hard 
rating or anything like that. But uh, I think that's where it falls. Oh, you know what I should do? Man, I'm a num num dum dum. We already knew that though. You know what I should do? Oh, jeez, I'm so stupid. I should add a bunch of text so that I can just click on and off like 5, 4.54, 4.0, 3. Point, yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is fine. Anyways, Nahiri's Machinations 2.0. Let's go to the next one. Near Heath Chaplin. One white, three colorless for a 3 1 lifelink. Pretty frail for four mana. Uh, one white, two colorless exile. Near Heath Chaplin from your graveyard. Put two. Put two. 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. Activate this ability only time you can cast a sorcery. Man, I love this card. Um, your opponent is going to want to kill it or trade with it immediately because of the lifelink, which makes it a very, you know, very high uh, target for trade. And then once it's in your graveyard, you're going to get two 1-1 one, one flyers. I think this card is actually very, very solid. Yes, it's weak by itself, um, but three power means it's going to trade with a lot of cards. Add to the fact that you get two 1-1 one, one flyers. Granted, sorcery speed, and it costs three mana after it dies. But I think this card is 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 excellent as far as uncommons go. Um, I probably take this pretty early in draft, and it's a card that you could splash in sealed. I don't know if its power level is is that high, but um, it's definitely a card that that has a ton of value. I'm going to give this card a 3.5. <clears throat> Definitely not a 4.0, but I think 3.0 would be giving it um, a little bit of less credit than it deserves. We're going to go with 3.5 on the Near Heath Chaplain. All right. Batter up. Boop. We have the Not Forgotten. Not forgotten. One white, one colorless sorcery. Put target card from a graveyard on the bottom or top, on the top or bottom of its owner's library. Okay, I read this differently the first time I read it. Put a one-one white spirit creature token with flying on the battlefield. This is actually not that bad. <coughs> at first, <clears throat> at first I thought it was just put on the bottom of the library. So I, I figured it was just a way to get rid of delirium for the opponent. But this is kind of like a weird, a weird regrowth for white. Put target card from a graveyard on the top or bottom of its owner's library. So not only can you kill their delirium, you can also, you can also like rebuy a, a decent card from your graveyard. It's it's not technically rebuying though because you put you put it on top. Ooh, further, and this this is more fringe scenario. Uh, you can put like lands back on top of your opponent's library to to negate them a draw later in the game. Hmm. I think this is actually a little bit better than you would first uh, think. Making it a sorcery makes it a lot worse. If it was an instant, it'd be really sweet. But uh, I think I'm going to give this a little bit higher than, I, than I, what I was originally going to. Not a 3.5, but I think this card is probably like a 2.25? Like, I'm probably always going to run this in my white deck. Maybe not multiples, but the first one, I think, is cute. I think this has some value. I think it's not as bad as you think it is. But it's still not great. I'm going to go with the 2.25 on the Not Forgotten. Alright. Next card we have... Audric Lunark Marshall. 3-3 three, three for 4. Legendary Creature Human Soldier. At the beginning of each combat, each at the beginning of each combat. Okay, so your turn and your opponent's turn. Creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. If a creature you control is first strike, the same is true for flying. Death touch, double strike, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, skulk, trample, and vigilance. <gasps> okay. Um. So this is kind of a build around me card. In sealed, it's going to be a lot harder because you know you're just given a pool. But in draft. If you first pick this, it's still probably going to be kind of bad. Maybe that's not true. At worst, it's a hill giant, right? At worst, it's a hill giant, and then it's all upside after that. 
I think this card has potential, but generally it's not going to do what you want it to do. White does have a lot of flyers, yes, and I think Audric is probably good for that. Um, but if if you're trying to get multiple multiple abilities in combat, I think you're you're tricking yourself. That being said, again, there are a ton of flyers in white, and even if Audric just said uh, at the beginning of each combat, creatures you control gain flying until end of turn, that would be very good. Uh, and again, he's a hill giant at the very worst. I think this is is kind of a sleeper, uh, and it has high potential. There's there's like the, no downside, right? No downside. It's just a hill giant at the very worst case, but uh, upside is is all there. I think Audric is probably a three point five, maybe. Oh. Maybe a four. I don't want to. I don't want to rate it too highly because, again, you have to have something else to work with it. But uh, this card is not bad. This card has 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 potential. All right. Next up. So after Audric Lunaric Marshall, three point five. We are going to go to open the armory. I like the uh, flavor text on this card. One white, one colorless sorcery. Search your library for an aura or equipment card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. I would need to have a lot of one good equipment, two good auras, or three, a combination of both. I wouldn't run this if I only had one good equipment or aura. I might start considering it if I had multiples. Um, I don't think this is a card you want to necessarily run. Uh, I can't even think of an aura that... I mean, maybe if you have multiple bond by Moonsilvers, then yes, this gets better. But generally cards like this aren't something that you want uh, in a limited environment. It has potential. It's all about how many auras or equipment you have. I am probably not going to play this very frequently. I am certainly not going to take it very highly. This is probably like a 1.25. Feels bad, man. Feels bad, man. Uh, next up, we have... Boop, boop, Paranoid Parish Blade. I love this card. One white, two colors for a 3-2 human soldier. Delirium gets plus one, plus zero, oh, and has first strike, as long as there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. Uh, this card is sweet. <clears throat> it's an uncommon. Um, just as a 3-mana three 3-2, three perfectly fine and limited. You know, that's that's the, basically the body size that you want. Um, and in the late game, this is a real threat. 4-power first strike is not easy to beat in combat. And uh, there are a, a lot of ways to turn on Delirium in this format. I was talking about the... Um, the, the Shard of Broken Glass earlier, the equipment that mills you two whenever a creature attacks. Uh, I think this card is is just going to be perfectly fine, right? You're not going to pick it highly, um, but if you get it, you're going to be happy. And in your sealed pools, again, it's just perfectly fine. It's not great, it doesn't do much, but, uh, you know, it doesn't require a lot of work to become a very big beater. I'm going to give this a 2.5. Paranoid Perish Blade, 2.5. <clears throat> Alright. <clears throat> Apologies if I die on stream. Uh, I give all my cards away to the first person that says banana if I die. Puncturing Light, 1 white, 1 colorless, instant. Tar destroy, target attacking or blocking creature with power 3 or less. I remember this from, um, what was it, the original Rise of the Eldrazi. <clears throat> I think this is, and maybe even earlier than that, actually. That this has been reprinted a few times. Uh, as far as removal goes, this is this is decent. Uh, there aren't a lot of huge, well, rather, there are a lot of smaller creatures, and this is both um, attacking or blocking, so you can use it on your turn or the opponent's turn. Uh, it's fine. I'm not going to play many. I'm probably not going to run more than two in my decks. Uh, but... You know, it does everything you want for a cheap combat trick. I think this is probably another 2.5, or I'm just going to leave it uh, the same rating as the, the Paranoid uh, Parish Blade. Not bad. Not great. 
perfectly fine. Next up, Reaper of Flight Moon Silver. Two white, three colors, three three flyer. Again, fine stats. I was mentioning how five mana flyer, three three flyers are the staple in limited. Uh, Delirium, sacrifice another creature. Reaper of Flight Moon Silver gets plus two plus one until end of turn. Activate this ability only if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. So, base, it's a three three flyer for five. And then if you have Delirium, it turns into uh, Fallen Angel. Not shabby. This is definitely a good win condition in white. And, um, you know, I think this, this will definitely kill some people out of nowhere. You turn on Delirium and then, bam, sacrifice all your creatures and, and make it huge. Uh, it's not great, it's not amazing, but it's, it's definitely a fine top-end card in your white decks. I, I think I give this a uh, 2.75. I don't want to give it a 3, but it's a 2.75. It's a 2.75. Decent. Not exceptional. <clears throat> uh, you cannot sacrifice a creature if you don't have Delirium, so no. That doesn't work, <laughs> yeah. Also, you, you would assume one of the card types in your graveyard would already be a creature, but... Anyway. Next we have, ooh, the Silver Strike. This one is quite nice. One white, three colorless. Aroo! One white, three colorless, instant. Destroy target attacking creature, you gain three life. Again, white, showing that it has a ton of good removal spells in this format. Um, I think this is worse than a few of them, but this is definitely better than most, and eh, it's all upside, right? Four mana is not too much of an investment. It's basically a divine verdict that gains you three life. Uh, I would splash for this card. I think it's good enough to splash for. Uh, it's probably a decently high pick in draft, considering it's uncommon and there aren't too many just straight up destroy effects in the format. Granted, the creature has to be attacking, yes, but I think this is definitely. Put that there. This is definitely at least a 3, maybe even a 3.5. I'll give it a 3.25. And uh, I think, I think that, again, this card is just very, very solid. So, Silver Strike, 3.25 IMO. Next up, Spectral Shepherd. This is the uh, spirit bouncer I was talking about earlier. Three mana, so one white, two colors for a 2 2 flying spirit. And you can play a blue and a white to return target spirit you control to its owner's hand. Return target spirit, not another target spirit, target spirit. So, um, <clears throat> this is kind of like blinking spirit or fleeting image. There are a bunch of creatures that are similar to this one, but this one can bounce your other spirits. Uh, so if you need to save one in combat, or if you're, you know, like, not, well, it would be a chump block. You can you can chump block and then bounce. This card has some some decent value. You do have to be playing some number of blue cards to turn on the extra ability. But even as a Windrake, I think it's perfectly acceptable. Um, it's not a high pick, even if you're in blue white. But it's it's perfectly fine. I think I'm gonna give it a 2.5. So Spectral Shepherd, 2.5. It's fine. It's not great. All right. Stern Constable. So at first I thought this card was terrible, then I thought it was okay with Madness, and now I settled on, well, I'll let you know. 1-white, one 1-1, white, one one, Human Soldier, tap, discard a card, tap, target creature. Hear me out. <clears throat> Hear me out. Um... I do not believe white pairs very well <clears throat> with uh, red, which is one of the madness colors. It is okay with red, but it is not great with red. I think it pa pairs quite well, quite well with black. Uh, I think there are uh, some very, very good black-white decks uh, in this format, draft especially. Um, and that is where this is going to come into play. Right? Discard a card. So, it enables Delirium, it enables Madness. Uh, and I think this card is going to be very, very good in those type of decks. Plus, think about it. Sanatorium Skeleton Stern Constable. Whoa! Mind blown! Alright, I just had to throw that out there. Uh, in the black-white decks, I think this is going to be quite solid, right? You have a lot of the Madness creatures, like the 3-5 five for 5, the, the twins of whoever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you also have 
<clears throat> a lot of madness creatures. Sorry, sorry, a lot of delirium cards, and I think this is good for enabling that. Um, this this is a card I think people will underrate, and then maybe overrate, and then it'll finally settle. It's it's one of those cards that seems bad or it seems good, and then you know your your opinion is going to change. I'm actually gonna give this a pretty high rating. I'm gonna give this a 2.75. I think in the right decks that this is going to be very very good. Uh, otherwise, it's just okay. It can turn like late game lands into a tap um, in those other decks, but keep an eye on this card. I, I'm, I certainly will as well. Uh, the, the Madness and Delirium decks are really fun, and this is going to be decent in those in those lists. Strength of Arms is our next one. Uh, one white. I'm, I'm totally kidding about the Sanitarium Skeleton thing, by the way. Uh, anyways, one white instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If you control an equipment, Put a 1-1 one, one white human soldier token onto the battlefield. <clears throat> I think it is. No. Just hear me out on that stern constable, alright? Just wait until the format gets played. Believe me. Believe me. Uh, this is a, a decent combat trick. <clears throat> one white for plus two plus two is, is already decent, and if you get an old equipment, you're gonna get some extra value. I think this is fine. It's filler. Um, I'm not unhappy to run one. This is probably like a 1.5. Not a huge fan of combat tricks, but this one's okay. No, not much to be said about that. All right, let's keep chugging along. I want to finish this quickly because it's an hour and a half into the stream and I haven't even finished white yet. So, baby rage, somebody kill me. All right. Survive the night. One white, two colors, instant. Target creature gets plus one, plus one, gains indestructible until end of turn. Uh, we just had make a stand in the last set, which was one white, two colors. Creatures you control get plus one plus so and gain indestructible until end of turn. So, this is a little bit awkward. You do get to investigate with this, so it's pseudo cycles uh, at the very worst, but it's not the mass appeal that we had seen previously. <clears throat> Uh, I think this card is actually a fine combat trick. Um, indestructible is is always very, very powerful, right? Indestructible is always very, very powerful, and this blows out other combat tricks like the gr grotesque mutation, um, un uncaged fury type thing. Oh my god, I'm losing my voice. Um, but survive the night, I think, is 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 perfectly good. Again, it's it's more of a filler. I'm not going to be running too many of them. Um, but it, it does its work. I'm going to give this a 2.0. <clears throat> and again, it cycles at the very worst, right? It's it's slow, but it, it cycles. So, Survive the Night, 2.0. Ah, now we're coming to the, the trick that I think is is nice. Tenacity. Alright, one white, three colors, instant. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain lifelink until end of turn. Untap those creatures. Um... Again, if you don't have any creatures, or if you only have like one creature and you're on the back foot, this this is not that great. But man, in a racing situation, this card can do so much. Uh, I think I like it just because it gets plus one, plus one. It gives them lifelink, and it untaps those creatures. And if you know me, I like getting into racing situations because I like... I was gonna say tapping dude sideways, but maybe that maybe that sounds a little bit weird. Uh, but I like turning creatures sideways and attacking, so racing situations are real good. <clears throat> real good. Um, I'm gonna rate this higher than I think it's worth, but I still think this card is is, is decent. I'm not gonna give it a 2.0. I'm gonna give it a 3.0. This is as far as combat tricks are concerned. Very nice. Very nice. <clears throat> Alright, so Tenacity 3.0. Next up, we are going to go down to Thalia's Lieutenant. One white, one colorless, one one. Blah. When Thalia's Lieutenant enters the battlefield, put a one one counter on each other human creature you control. Ooh. Whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control, put a one one counter on Thalia's Lieutenant. Wow! A lot of humans in this set. Uh, we've already gone through quite a few of them. <clears throat> 
We've already gone through quite a few of them. Uh, so this is like a pseudo lord of sorts. I don't know. I'm, I like it's a rare, so you're not going to see it as frequently as uh, as some of the other cards. But man, I really want to try to build around this card. If you remember Champion of the Parish, if you remember Champion of the Parish, think of it. Think of that like, or think of this like that, except where Champion of the Parish was terrible a top deck late game. This can actually put a counter on everything, right? Yeah. So if you if you top deck this late and you have any number of humans, like they're all gonna get buffed. Whereas with like Champion of the Parish, it was just a one one late in the game. So it grows. It grows your other dudes. Um, I think this isn't bad. I think if you take this early enough in draft, you can really make it powerful. In sealed, it's going to be a little bit awkward for sure. But I think this card is, is probably like a 3.0. So. Not bad. Not bad, man. <clears throat> Alright. Next up, we have Thraben Inspector. One white for a 1-2. When it enters the battlefield, investigate. I think a lot of people are going to play this because they think it's it cycles, which it kind of does, but it's a 1-2. It's a 1-2. So I am not going to play this card very frequently, or at least I hope I don't. Uh, maybe in some clue-centric deck, yeah, sure, but uh, I think this card is is, is poor. And I'm not going to run it in many of my decks. And if I am, I'm very, very sad. I'm going to give this a 1.0 Thraben Inspector. Next up, we do have a sweet one coming up here now. This card is nice. The Topple Geist. One white, one one flyer. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. So, one mana for a one one flyer. You guys know I like my Suntail Hawks. Uh, more out of troll respect than anything else, but Toppelgeist enters the battlefield, right? If you cast it on turn one, then it's probably going to get a few points of damage just because it came down so early. Um, you can play it later in the game and it still has an effect. You can tap in a creature to get in another creature or two. And then if you have Delirium, this is where it really com comes to shine. Delirium. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if there are four or more card types among cards in their graveyard, tap, or sorry, in your graveyard, tap target creature that player controls. So, this card is good late, it's good early, and it's evasive? Sign me up. I think this card is is very good. Uh, it's super frail, yes, but it, it does so much work. Um, it impressed me the entirety of last weekend. I think this is a card that I will happily take early, and it's a card in sealed that I, I might not splash for, but um, it's, going to, it's going to lure me into white uh, a little bit higher. I'm gonna give this card a 3.5. Bam. Toppelgeist. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like pseudo-removal late game. Alright. <clears throat> Next up, we have the Unruly Mob. So this is a reprint from original Innistrad. Uh, one white, one colorless, one one, human. Whenever another creature you control dies, put a one one counter on Unruly Mob. I don't like this card. I didn't like it in original Innistrad, though I did play it, but that was more because of the human theme. <sighs> I just don't think like this type of card is that great. Uh, Lumbernaut I thought was okay, but it, cause, because it had hexproof, and that was when any creature died, if I remember correctly. This one, it's only when creatures you control die. There aren't too many like creatures that you can just throw away for for no value. Um, yeah, exactly. It's a worse Rot Shambler, and Rot Shambler I didn't even think was that good anyways. So, Unruly Mob, I'm going to give it a pretty low rating. I don't think this card is good. Uh, honestly, I'm going to give it a 1.0. That's how much I hate it. Unruly Mob, get better, please. Alright. Batter up. Oh, no! Clicked on the wrong link. Oh, God, ruined. Alright. We're near the end here. Vessel of Ephem... Wait. Ephem... Ephemera? Ephemera. Vessel of Ephemera. Okay. Uh, one white, one colorless enchantment. 
then you have to pay a white and two colorless sacrifice vessel of ephemera. Ephemera. <laughs> Put two one one white spirit creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. Uh, so, it doesn't do anything until you have five mana. You can do this at instant speed, though. You can do this at instant speed. I do not think this white vessel is garbage. I think if you guys think this card is bad, you are you are vastly underrating it. Uh, it is a very easy way to put an enchantment. Yeah, exactly. It is a very easy way to put this uh, uh, put an enchantment in the graveyard for delirium, and it's two evasive creatures, and there's not much investment, right? It, it's split over generally two turns, and it is expensive for two one one white flyers, but um, I think this card is actually is very decent. It's not a first pick quality card. But I think it's actually a, a decently high, moderate, or middle ground pick card. And I'm always going to be happy to run this in sealed uh, if I'm playing white. I think this, this card is quite good. I'm going to give it a 3.0. Maybe even a 3.5, honestly. Vessel of Ephemera. That concludes the white cards for this set review. Um,